We're looking at uh, still study. at, you know, what the Lord is um, doing in the uh, camp of Israel. We're early again in the journey uh, as they have left Egypt and uh, they have crossed the Red Sea and um, they are journeying in the wilderness. And so this, this journey is, is rough, it's hard, and um, they need to, how can I say, um, make the way that the Lord has provided them. They need to go through the wilderness. Amen. Amen. And uh, we're going to uh, pick up at um, basically at verse 10 of chapter, Numbers chapter 11, verse 10. And I, I know we have read some of this before and uh, we're gonna go down through here and just kinda parse some of this and get an idea of what the Lord's trying to uh, do with these people and, uh, and what it means to us. Okay. Uh, verse 10 says, Moses heard the people weeping th throughout their clans. Everyone at the door of his tent and the anger of the Lord blazed hotly and Moses was uh, uh, displeased and Moses said to the Lord why have you dealt ill with your servant and why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all this people on me did I uh, conceive all this people did I give them birth that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a nursing child to the land that you swore to give their fathers? Where am I to, uh, to get meat uh, to give all this people? For they weep before me and say, give us meat that we may eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone. The burden is too heavy for me. If you will treat me like this, kill me at once. If I have found favor in your sight, that I may not see my wretchedness. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Almighty God, for your blessing, your goodness. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you would help, Lord God, and do great things. We pray that you would minister mightily and that you, Lord God, would do the great things that you can do in our midst and in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. You may be seated. I want, <laughs> I want to read this again, the ESV, because uh, there's some good things that are here in respect of understanding uh, when you read a little more, more plain English. Uh, it is hard for um, Moses now Again, um, they're not, I mean, they left uh, Sinai and they're moving and they're not that far down the road and they're already com 
complaining. What indication it, it, it shows us here in the scripture uh, is that, you know, the, uh, the change, you know, when manna was first given to them, it, it, it was something more pleasant. There was a change in the, uh, the way the people describe it, okay? Um, and uh, they began to try to um, diversify, and they made it different ways, as we studied last time, okay? Um, <clears throat> so they're complaining what the Lord gave them to eat. Okay, what the Lord provided them. The food that the Lord provided them, the scripture lets us know, was, uh, was able to strengthen them for the journey. Um, in other words, it was, it was divine food. Okay. The similarity to that, you know, we think, uh, you know, and we talked about food a little bit and stuff that we like and all that, but the similarity here in this um, is a lot of times uh, in our walk with God, we don't like what we have to hear. Okay, the Lord talks to us about his word, and we have seen it, uh, Jesus um, symbolized his word as himself. Okay. He also symbolized his word as bread. And then himself as bread. Therefore, this is why communion. We uh, take the bread and it's broken. And all this is a symbol of Christ's body. This is takes us all the way back to um, this portion, this story in the wilderness with Moses and the children of Israel. There is another one, uh, there is another similarity that's made in the New Testament that that manna was him. That was given in the wilderness. Okay? There is, uh, you know, when this thing's fresh to us, we receive the Holy Ghost and, you know, and everything's um, really fresh in our heart and our minds. And, you know, uh, we're about ready to take on the world. Uh, and uh, we feel the, whole, the Holy Ghost power and, you know, there's, there's rejoicing. But... Uh, what happens is the uh, same thing that happens with this man. <laughs> you know, we try to soup it up and jazz it up and okay and do all kinds of things to it. But the simple fact is that we get tired, okay? Um, you know, <laughs> we come to the house of the Lord many times and, and uh, uh, you know, we're not, we're in on the mindset to be here to meet with God. A lot of times, you know, it, of course, there's things that happen uh, from Sunday to Wednesday. And all kinds of things can come into our lives and distract us or disturb us. The thing, thing is, uh, when we approach the Lord, there should be some sort of preparation that we do within our hearts and minds. There should be prayer. There should be uh, re 
rejoicing, there should be, um, you know, praise, and all those things should be happening before. Okay, why? Because that's the manner of how we're taught through the Old Testament, through the Psalms, through uh, all things that um, that the Lord has shown us, even in, in how to pray, okay? Uh, and all these different things that are reiterated over and over again, maybe, you know, a little differently, but there is, there is some context to this. Why? Because um, as Paul said, we can get weary in well-doing. And we are not supposed to be that. We're not to allow that to happen. Um, and how do, you know, <clears throat> how do we uh, change this, this mindset? Well, we have to realize that, you know, what the Lord has given us is very unique and very powerful. In fact, if there is anything that is disease that's going to come into our body or anything that is going to destroy us, this manna that they were fed in the wilderness would stop it. You understand what I'm saying? This, this was more than just, uh, you know, to keep their bellies full. This was something to transform their ability to put up with the journey they're on. Okay? In other words, that their muscles would have the strength that this manna is going to supply them. Okay? Um, Again, it's, it's divinely sent and divinely formulated. God's word's not always something that, even though it was sweet at the beginning, sometimes it, it begins to taste like bread doused with olive oil. Okay? We lose the sweetness, and there's a more of a different taste that comes to us. This indicates I'm eating it for my health, not for my pleasure. This is the indication that's shown in Scripture as the previous descriptions where it was sweet kind of had a honey taste to it. Now it tastes more of a blander kind of olive oil without any seasonings. You know, it's uh, kind of bland. All right? I like to cook with olive oil. Mm -hmm. I, I do most of my cooking with olive oil. All right? Um, and I cook a lot more than I ever did. But <laughs> now, but, you know, I, I know what it is. Now, you know, uh, you can put some cheeses and some um, garlic in there and it almost gets a buttery taste. Okay. Alright. You don't have to put salt in. All you have to do is put the garlic with the cheese. Okay. Mix that in there. And um, and they do that sometimes at olive uh, 
Olive Garden or um, Italian oven. If if you want, you know, instead of butter, okay, you can get that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's had it. Mm -hmm. yeah. But what they're explaining here, olive oil and oil, and it doesn't, you know, specifically um, indicate olive oil, but it denotes oil. Now, most likely, that's probably what it tasted like, but oil was used for healing properties in those days. Um, a lot of your specialty oils uh, that were um, usually mixed with olive oil, and they had, um, they would have sometimes uh, some other uh, herbs that were mixed with it and um, and they would take these and they would actually anoint people with okay in other words um, uh, years uh, uh, years ago you used to put on those those old mustard plasters. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was better, if it was better to have the, <laughs> the group or, you know. <laughs> the mustard plaster. Okay? Or there would be other things, you know, like, you know, you would smell like, uh, cough syrup going down a road because you know there's a big all over you. All right? Because you have again that's an additive to an oil that is placed that that oil sinks into your skin and actually does have a healing property. And the menthol is added to it to help open up our, our memory. So I'm, I'm saying all that, I'm trying to give you proof here that, uh, you know, something's been used in the past, it's, it has not so far long ago, okay, uh, was still, uh, similar things were used. And, um, and then of course we have all these oils today, these essential uh, oils that um, that are sold and uh, people use them, okay? Uh, the CBD oils today are, are like huge, huge things. And they're supposed to be cure-alls for a lot of different things, okay? And, you know, you mix them with all kinds of different other oils and you, you know, you, uh, you breathe those in, you put them in those, um, you know, in those little Heaters that put that aroma and, and just basically put that oil into the air so that you breathe it in and breathe it out. Okay, I'm saying all this again to, um, uh, you know, our modern society has accepted the idea of how oil uh, has, um, has some healing properties and that can affect change, okay? Uh, in other words, it's a medicine, okay? Now, we don't, um, uh, you know, if, <laughs> uh, if, if we're wanting something, um, a little bit more than during dinner, um, we're usually, you know, not going to turn to, you know, I'm going to eat an onion like an apple. Why? Okay. Now I know people that that have done that. 
faith, um, and some were uh, very closely related to me. Um, but, you know, that's not the norm. We usually turn to something like ice cream, maybe a piece of pie, a little piece of cake, something sweet. We don't turn to something that's kind of bland, right? Now, bread, again, is with oil. Bread, again, is this substance of life, all right? Uh, in that day, eating meat wasn't as frequent as what, how we eat meat today in our culture, right? This wheat bread, this whole grain bread, not stuff, they didn't bleach it. They may have ground it down to a real fine flour, like a powder, okay? On, on the choices bread, but it was still that whole grain and all that's in there. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. So we know uh, today that that's important. So what we're describing here is I am eating what is good for me. And I'm tired of it. That's what's happened with the Israelites. I'm tired of eating what is good for me. Yeah, it was sweet at first, but now it's just something to keep us going and keep us where we need to be. All right? To be able to follow the direction that God is going in. Right? If we're not careful, that's exactly what happens to us. In other words, coming to church and all that is doing what's good for me. Not something that I am looking for. Now, it's good to eat stuff that's good for you, all right? I, I mean, I've had that lecture when I was younger because there was stuff that I didn't want to eat, okay? Um, and a lot of times I'd have, um, what can I say, <laughs> a dispute. <laughs> Let me put this in here. I'd have a dispute, you know, with everything that's going on. Uh, uh, with what was for supper. Um, now, I usually protested with uh, cabbage and turnips. Has anybody ever had cabbage and turnips? With a little ham broth in there. <laughs> if you, <clears throat> if they had ham broth in it, okay, you're German. <laughs> Bad beef broth, you're you're Irish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, I hate that was. I, you know, I'd rather take it, turn it out of the ground, clean it, and slice it up and eat it than for some reason when you cooked it, I didn't like it. I don't know why. And the cabbage. We, mm -hmm. you relived really to eating that cabbage and turnips for life, for the three days afterwards. 
And you know what I mean. Okay? So, wow, that was one of my dad's favorites. Okay? Ooh. Okay? It is not going to be something that I would turn to and say, listen, let's make this. Oh, I can't wait till we have that. But sometimes what the Lord gives us is that. It's the stuff we don't like. It smells up the whole house, too. Okay? And here's, here, here's the thing. We have to say, listen, this is why it's important for us to rejoice. This is why it's important for us to talk to God. This is why it's important to exercise with the Spirit of the Lord within us. Praise God before we come here because what is going to come to us will be more palpable. You know what I'm saying? In other words, we'll enjoy it. It'll be something, man, I didn't know I was that hungry. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And that has to do, and it has a lot to do with our approach to uh, to the Lord and what he provides. Sometimes it it's the same thing over and over again, but what it is, if we allow that to be something that we rejoice in, if we allow that to be something that, listen, I, I want what God has for me. Let me see the details, God. What's hidden here? Because, how do I know things are hidden? Because God told me he hides stuff. Where do I know that in the Bible? <coughs> you begin to read Proverbs, pretty soon you get it. You understand that the Lord hides gold. Silver and diamonds. But the only way that you're going to get them is you're going to have to mine for them. During the Gold Rush uh, in 1849, and uh, which, you know, 49ers was uh, used to even describe a football team. <laughs> okay. Um, there was this big rush from the East Coast, and people actually were hearing about this all over the world. And uh, they were trying to get to, to California. Uh, to be a part of this gold rush. Um, but, um, you know, many people did not find their wealth there. Many of the first ones that there uh, had panned the streams pretty well. And a lot of the, the gold was, uh, was gone. And so, they had to do, you know, they had to go to other measures and um, began to muddy the water and began to, to cause where they would build these little, how can I say, uh, ditches and um, they would, uh, how can I say, dig up the bottom uh, of the, the, the river and the mud that was around there. And so that water would go through there and wash through that mud. Okay, and, and so uh, many times that stream that was pristine at one time uh, became nothing but a mud hole. Uh, all this, when you, when you take this, people were rushing to this, but there was a lot of work that had to be done for, for that gold to be found. 
even though they were panting for gold. All right. People left everything behind them, hoping that they would make a fortune. You hear what I'm saying? Why? Why? Because they were tired of just surviving. All right. I think we don't allow ourselves to get enough of God. Okay. It's, um, Proverbs tells us to look for wisdom and knowledge and understanding. These were the three things that were kept on being iterated. Okay? And that we would basically react in equity or equalness with God's morality. And in the King James, we see this word equity. Okay? So if you read, you read through Proverbs, you can find that word equity. <coughs> so instead of scratching your heads, it has to do with justice, but it has to do it has to do with more of a participation in a reactance to what we have gained. You hear? You didn't fall asleep yet? All right, I should bring firecrackers. <laughs> There's somebody that would help me out real well there. Um, uh, that, the idea that the Lord, Lord wants us to go after him. The qualities that make him who he is. This, not the wisdom of this world, because Paul describes it in Romans and 1 Corinthians, uh, and even in the first part of 2 Corinthians, is, is basically foolishness, the wisdom of this world. What, what we see in Proverbs is God's wisdom, God's understanding. In other words, the knowledge that comes from God, not the knowledge that uh, comes from ungodly men. On how to, you know, uh, how to, you know, get rich and famous and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we are to focus, and, and, and I'm not saying that people that are are rich and famous, uh, you know, can't be a part of God's kingdom. That's not what I mean. Okay, um, there's not many. Um, that I gate, all right, it was a very small gate. And so you can't get a lot through there. So when Jesus was talking about this, you know, it's, you know, if the camel can't get through there, that's how hard it is for a rich man to get through there. You got it? So he didn't say it was impossible. But there's got to be some things unloaded. Okay, in other words, you can't hold on to everything. 
You let God deal with it. <laughs> All right. So, and that's, man has mostly failed in that area. Every time it's happened. Biblically, and of course throughout history. So, again, what the Lord gives us will give us strength. Okay? What his word will show us will give us strength. Moses was carrying all this. You know, when you have this many people yelling at you. Okay? Here's the thing. It was the outer part of the camp, as we read here, um, that where the fire was. Okay, the outer part of the camp was the people who came along with the Israelites. They may have been half Israelite. They, they may have been some Egyptians. They could have been uh, some of uh, the, um, how can I say, the other semi-tribes okay, that were a part of that world at that day. Uh, all Semites were not children of Abraham. You don't believe me, you can study it. It's a long study. But um, many of these people that were, that had come into Egypt, some of them were from conquered uh, some uh, Egyptians conquered some pe people. They conquered some nations. They, they con conquered some things. And so the Egyptians would take these people and enslave them. So the Israelites were enslaved. And so they were serving with the Israelites, living with the Israelites, living in the same area with the Israelites, experiencing the same beatings, experiencing the same workload experiencing all this. So when the Lord took the Israelites out, they went with Israel. But the scripture lets us know that the outer part of this camp is where the fire is, and the people were uh, traumatized. In this being traumatized by this, but where is it at? The outer part. All the Israelites that were Israelites, and they, they were a member of a tribe, and all this kind of stuff, they were, uh, they were placed... Uh, in these four different areas, you know, uh, you know, north, south, east, west, okay, and and there was three tribes in each of these groups, okay, and then sub tribes that were based, and, and the sub tribes within the tribes would, or families within those tribes would be positioned either closer or farther farther away from the tabernacle. Okay, you got all this? Makes sense to you? Now it's probably all God look good. In other words, God doesn't put everybody in the same position. Amen. God has always had diversity. He had always had diversity in what uh, in what uh, he has gifted or how he uses certain people. We are not all going to be the same thing. Even though Moses said, listen, I wish they'd all prophesy. When Joshua was disturbed about the two of the 70 who did not go to the temple, okay, and they were prophesying amongst the camp. Instead, they were supposed to be at the tabernacle, excuse me, with Moses. So there were 68 of these 70 that were appointed. And the scripture tells them that that spirit that rested on Moses was given in portion to those 70 so they could help do this. And so as soon as that happened, they began to all prophesy. And the two that did not go to the tabernacle began to start running through 
the camp and prophesied. Scaring the heebie jeebies out of everybody. And Joshua said, you know, went to Moses, because this young kid came, came to Joshua, and then Joshua goes to Moses and says, Hey, Moses, these dudes over here, you, you know, they're not over at the tabernacle with you, you and, and they're prophesying. And Moses says, You know what? I wish they'd all be doing the same thing. I don't care. You may be jealous for me, okay? You, you, you may think that they're taking something away from me, but what I see is something good. Let the people hear what they have to say. What the Spirit of the Lord is bringing to these people. They, the people don't want to be the people that don't want to be close to the tabernacle, close to the presence of God. Let their ears be burned and let He do. It's basically what He's saying. And I wish they all were doing the same exact thing. God. He would see, he'd be seeing it. <laughs> They're going to be setting themselves straight. Instead of them blaming me all the time. Okay. Here's what Moses said. And I kind of wonder if it really came from the Lord. <laughs> he said, let it happen. They're going to hear the same thing they heard. You understand this? There's got to be a response to the presence of Almighty God. And it can energize. And it can move if we allow God to do what He wants to do. Sometimes it's like turnips and potatoes. And we don't want anything to do with it. Those turnips are not supposed to be squishy. They're supposed to be hard. <laughs> Sorry, I'm hung up about that. <laughs> okay. The thing is, we don't always proceed with wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Why? It's because we don't go for it. We don't seek it. We'd rather be oblivious. You know, we have this mindset, the less I know, the less I'm responsible for. But the Lord said, I want to swing to the ingredients, not anymore. That's what he said. That's what Jesus said. That's over. That's done. There's no need for it. Okay. And so we can claim 
ignorance we can claim I don't like this stuff <laughs> and the Lord can allow us to have a fill of something that's going to make us sick That we become spiritually sick, True. spiritually weak, yeah. till we can't even stand the smell of it. Oh, Lord. Okay, still with me? Amen. So, this is what the story brings to us. There's many aspects of it. Okay. There is um, Moses who is just upset. And he's he's talking to the Lord and and the Lord talks back to him and says, you know, in in my unable, am I, uh, you know, am I some sort of cripple? In other words, is my hand short? That's what he's saying. Am I crippled? I think that was tone. Okay, in that writing. Uh, Moses got himself straightened out by the Lord, and the Lord, and, and he goes and tells the elders and everybody else what the Lord had told him and said, Listen, and guess what? You're going to have me for a month. And that's all you're going to have. There ain't going to be no man. It's just going to be stinky, smelly. I'll tell you what, do you ever butcher birds? Butcher. Okay. You know, used to hunt pheasant, woodcock, um, dove. All right. Have. I've had all those, okay. Um, and uh, grouse. And of course, chicken. Oh, chicken. Number chicken. <laughs> but I want to tell you something. After a week of killing chickens and scolding them, See, years ago, we, we didn't skin them. We scolded them. That was stupid Dutchman. That's what we always called ourselves, stupid Dutchman. Okay, and so you take that in there and you score. Did you ever smell a chicken with some feathers on it yet? And it is in scolded water. It is the most interesting smell that you could ever smell. After a while, that and your hands smell like it. If you're smart, you're wearing some kind of neoprene glove. If you're dumb like that was. Because those neoprene gloves did fit right on my hand, I'm going to be a man. Yeah, I smell like chicken for... <laughs> not a good chicken, but one of rotten. <laughs> okay. It smells atrocious. Now, you have millions and millions of quail coming. And it's time to cook time. It's time to butcher. 
I imagine what that camp smelled like. I know what it smelled like when we did it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There was times you were cured of having chicken for months. That's true. Seriously. That's true. Have you ever cleaned out a chicken coop? Mm. The old wooden chicken coops. You know what I'm talking about. All right? That's all on the grandpa had, these old wooden. Okay. That's your job. Oh, my God. There's just droppings everywhere, and you're taking that old <laughs> straw. That's, there's the bedding. <sighs> you know, all right? You know, you like to take that pitchfork that you got and, like, take it through all the chickens. <laughs> guys make a mess, man. All right? And so that stuff is, how can I say, it really can cause you to really think about things. And I'm sure that is why the Lord has sent quail. Guarantee it. Because they don't smell that good either. says, you know, it'll, it'll be coming out of your teeth. <laughs> it was a, it's a kind of a nice way to say it. I mean, no weak stomachs here. In other words, you're going to try not to throw up, but it's going to seep through your teeth. Okay? I'll get you. Not only that, it made him sick. <laughs> In fact, some Bibles will say in their titles of, of, of different, uh, you know, explanations about this part of Scripture, you know, It'll call it the plague of well. Because it turned into a plague. Because it, 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 it turned into something. See, the Lord knows better than what we do and what we need for the journey than we do. Now, if you would set a, things before kids, okay, they have a choice of, you know, good food, and, you know, some medium treaty food, and then sweets. What do you think they would choose? Sweets. My grandmother taught me a lesson years ago, and it was the longest time until I could have uh, M&M &M cookies. She made the greatest M&M &M cookies. Made big batches of them. Well, Mr. Smarty Pants here decided, see, I thought I was sneaking those M&M &M cookies. All right? Yeah. And they'd be loaded with M&Ms, you know, and so on. Eat, I'm gonna eat. Guess what ended up happening to me? <laughs> it seeped out of my teeth. <laughs> nice way of putting it, okay? All right. Uh, it was, it was a terrible experience, and I remember her looking over at me, 
me with that smile. I told you. Oh, you knew that? Nah, yes, I did. I figured you'd get your fill. Somewhere along the line, she learned that lesson a long time ago. Man. Okay. And here it is. You know, there is wisdom. But when we're that outer rabble, Scripture calls them rabble, calls them, you know, troublemakers, basically, all this kind of stuff. So these, these are not... These are not really Israelites, but they're they're in the outer camp. They're following along, all this kind of stuff. But it actually starts, and actually, when it comes to the quail part of it, all right, and the meat part of it, and Scripture does let us know it's it's the boys on the outside of the camp who started it. We have to be careful of our influences. The people that are always on the edge should be not who we're listening to. We need to get a little closer to the tabernacle where the prophets are prophesying. The farther we stay away from that, the longer we stay away from that, we're going to get traumatized in a terrible way. And the Lord allowed them to be in the camp. The Lord said, listen, come along with us. The Lord, okay, you, you know, you think throughout time, that maybe some of you have been in church for a long time, some of you may not have, but uh, you know, there are always those who are on the edge. And you wonder why God doesn't strike them dead or something because they cause so much trouble. They influence everybody else. They complain and all this kind of stuff. And they seem to always have so much influence. You've got to understand that's a test. Because there's always going to be people on the edge. And the closer you try to stay to them or you try to win them over, you're going to be won over by them. And you're going to suffer the consequences thereof. Amen. Your life is going to get messy. Okay. Say, well, it's messy. Serve the Lord sometimes. Not the same messy. No. Scripture calls it sin unto death. That kind of messy. Yeah. Right. Our kind of messy is troubles, tribulation. Yeah. But that kind of mess is sin unto death. In other words, total destruction. Right. Got it? And people don't get it. I've been in the state for years. Just don't get it. You can say it over and over and over again. And somehow they come up with some kind of logical thing. You know, to them it's logical. To me it's like, you, you sound like an evolutionist. You know? I mean, you speak in circles. Nothing's tied together. Just stay within their little subject matter. Don't question about this. And why is the strata different over here and here when it's the same depth? Oh, don't, 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 you don't know what you're doing.
talk about. Right. We're not professionals. <laughs> yes, you are. Professionally stupid. Okay? But that's what happens when you listen to the rabble. Because there's going to be rabble that is going to speak into your ear, get your attention, and start to make sense. When it starts making sense, you need to run to the tabernacle where the prophets are prophesying. As the writer of the psalm says, my foot almost nice slipped until I was in. Oh, hallelujah. When I see the prosperity of the wicked, but when I went in to his time, has changed. What I've seen and understood is, has been totally unraveled by the power of God. And I've seen His glory. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Can we just praise Him right now? Lord Jesus, we thank you, Almighty God. Lord Jesus, oh God, let your fire burn, Lord Jesus. Oh God, we pray, oh God, that you would do a work, Lord God, within us. Lord Jesus, we pray, dear God, that you would minister within our hearts and our lives. And Lord God, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would strengthen us and show us your work. Lord God, that we may be able, Lord God, to live in the manner, Lord God, Lord, that the manner may be sweet again, Lord God, to our palate, Lord. Lord God, that it may be fresh again. Lord God, may, Lord Jesus, be something again that we look for. Lord God, from the earliest part of the day to the going down of the sun. Lord Jesus, we pray, dear God. Lord, it become something, Lord Jesus. Lord God, rich in strength, Lord, to our bones. Lord God, to our soul. Lord Jesus, we give you praise for we honor you, Almighty God. Lord, let us see clearly. Oh, God, let us see clearly. Oh, let us see clearly. Oh, oh God, let me get all the problems I make. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, that your spirit will rest upon us. Oh, God. Oh, we praise you, Lord Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. Spirit, Lord of Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Yo 
Did you have that picture on? That's an old one. That's one of those like old flannel grass. But I want to tell you something, it would look a whole lot bigger than that. What God did was supernatural. Got something natural. And so we can forget that God has our best interests at heart. Right. And we 
could get just what we want. You know, make us sicker than dogs. And destroy us. Amen. Let's take heed in this hour. Amen. Let's stand. Uh, I want to remind you again, if you know of anybody um, who you think would make me someone interested in a Bible study, somebody that maybe you've talked to and just kind of get and uh, you just, you know, give me their name and address. And uh, I'll go knock on their door. See what happens. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Um, I'll take a lesson from sales years ago. Give me 12 names. might be interested. That's what I learned in insurance. Yeah, I sold insurance for a while. How stupid was I? But it taught me a lot of things. So, uh, I guess the Lord had to teach me something anyhow. How to talk to people. So, uh, of course, I'm not much of a talker, except when you get me on this subject, and uh, you want to shoot me. Stop. Overload. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Almighty God, for your goodness, your mercy. We pray, Lord God, that you would help us and strengthen us. Lord God, that you do the miraculous within our world. Lord Jesus, we know that you are a great and mighty. And we pray, Lord God, that you would work. Lord Jesus, the miraculous within this church, within those that are outside. Lord God, that we would go as we were told. Lord God, to go house to house, Lord, to different places, Lord God, breaking bread and having fellowship, Lord God, we pray that that would be a revival amongst us, and we give you the glory, in Jesus' name.